What is up ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, it's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with a hoot and a holler, a classic little banger. Hope you guys enjoy this video, drop a like if you do, and also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. What are you waiting on, dude? Come on, press the button. Also, if you haven't gotten your hands on some Goblin merch yet, what are you waiting on, dude? We got Mugshot merch. Beanies are back in stock. They were sold out for a little bit. Hey, we got them once again. Embroidered hoodies, high-quality stuff, beautiful merch, all for affordable prices. Check the link at the very top of the description if you're interested. And even if you don't plan on buying anything, just click it on the website and browse and does help me out. And I appreciate it. Thank you all for the support. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Let's dive right into it. So... We've got a fairly recent story for you guys today. This took place during the end of 2019. Some of you guys who've been around for a little while might remember that this is when I first moved out of my mom's house. And during this period, there was about a two-month span where I lived in this just absolute shithole slum of a house. I'm talking, it, it was terrible, dude. Like, I, I'm not exaggerating here. We had, we had no stove, okay? If a health inspector came to this house, it's getting condemned. It was terrible. The gas lines were all, listen, not good, all right? But that's for a different day. The reason I state that is because the, uh, the kind of slum house theme becomes apparent throughout the video. And also at this point, you know, I just moved down to a different town that I grew, uh, grew up in, and I didn't really have any friends down here. I also didn't really have any plugs down here, and I wasn't 21 yet. Dispos weren't open, didn't have my med card, so I was kind of struggling for weed. So I just kind of had to preface this video by saying that, so you'll get a better understanding of, of why this entire event happened. So, near my house at this time, there was a gas station maybe two blocks away that, you know, I'd go to all the time. I'd go there to grab my drinks, and there was one employee there in particular who we're gonna call Jimmy, who was the boy. This man would never card me. He'd never ask about shit. From the first time I went in there and tried to grab from him, he never one time carded me. I got very lucky meeting this guy because I went to the gas station, and this was obviously before I was 21, and I was trying to figure out if I could, like, grab liquor or wraps from anywhere nearby without having someone of age or with a fake or some shit like that. I went into this gas station, and this was the first time I'd ever been there, and this dude didn't card me. I asked for a bottle. He was just like, yeah, I got you, you know? It was kind of late at night, but he was the man. You know, after I grabbed that bottle, we were chatting a little bit. He's like, oh, that's what you're getting on tonight? And ever since that day, we kind of, you know, we chatted up every time I came into the gas station. I liked him. Jimmy was a funny guy. So on one particular day, you know, I go into the gas station, and I'm already fucked up, right? I'm already shit-faced at this point. I go in, and I'm just trying to grab some snacks. I'm not even trying to get anything. You know, I'm not trying to get any liquor or anything like that. Because I couldn't at this point. You know, Jimmy was working, but he was stocking the drinks up. There was someone else at the cash register, and I found out the hard way that everyone else that works at this gas station will card me. Jimmy is literally just the... He's the man. He's the one... He's the plug, all right? I needed him. So... I go in on this day, and Jimmy's stocking up the drinks. You know, I walk back in there, and I'm like, my boy, you know, what's going on? I'm fucked up, so I'm just chatting with him. I'm like, oh, how's your day going? What's going on? He could tell I'm fucked up, and he's like, oh, dude, what have you been drinking today? Like, I could, I could smell the liquor on you. I'm like, dude... I'm fucked up. I've been sipping on some good Ciroc today. I'm feeling great. You know, I'm just here to grab some snacks. So we're chatting a little bit, you know, just bullshitting with each other. And it comes about, he mentioned that he smoked before work. That perks my ears up, right? I, I love to hear that. Because at this point, like I just mentioned, I didn't really know anyone in this town. Initially, I moved into this house with two roommates, but at this point, they just both moved out. So I was now living alone, stranded, knew nobody in this town, really. So I was desperate to make some friends, meet some plugs, do anything, right? I Literally, I would do anything for the connect, right? So it comes about that he'd smoked before work, and I'm like, yo, dude, we should smoke together sometime. Jimmy says he's down, of course, you know, my man, and he's like, yo, get me on Snap or something. I'm pulling out my Snapchat, and we're chatting a little bit, and I'm like, yo, do you think you could serve me anything? Like, are you that kind of guy, or could you point me in the right direction? He's like, yeah, dude, just add me on Snapchat. We'll talk about that later, right? So I get him on Snapchat. I go in there and grab my snacks. I don't know. I don't remember what the fuck I got, dude. Whatever. Uh, I grab some snacks and head out, right? I go home, and it's all fine and dandy. You know, the, the night goes by. Nothing happens. A couple days pass. I end up hitting up Jimmy on Snapchat because I just run out of butt. 
you know, getting bud for me at this point was very sporadic. It really, the only way I was getting it is through, like, girls I matched with on Tinder. That was really it. it. It was getting very desperate, you know? And I'd just gotten in an argument with one of those people, so they, I, I was no longer going to be getting weed from her. So I needed Jimmy's connection, right? So I hit him up, and I'm like, yo, dude, you think you could hook me up with that guy? Or, like, could you sell me anything? And he's like, well, shit, like, why don't we just kick it later? I'm about to get off work. Like, you know, I could come over. Let's smoke. I said, bet, dude, that sounds wonderful. I'm knocking out two birds with one stone here, boys. I needed homies, Jimmy's the man. I needed bud, Jimmy's the man. I'm liking what I'm hearing. So I invite him over. I go and tidy up my house a little bit the best I could. And, you know, I, by the best I could, I mean, like, there's no way to make this house presentable, okay? I, I don't think I ever did a house tour video of this house, honestly, because I didn't really want to show you guys me living in a slum, because you guys probably would have tried to start a GoFundMe for me or something, and I didn't want that. But, like, literally, if you guys remember my live streams that I did out of this house for, like, a month or two, there was, like, like graffiti on the walls in, in some of the rooms that just never got covered. There was, like, this brick chimney that came up through the loft, which was uh, the upstairs area that I use as my bedroom slash, like, stream room and work area, all that. And the whole thing was just covered in, like, spray paint and graffiti. There was, like, an R.I.P. someone's name on there. You could tell that this was a trap house, you know? Like, you could tell that before I moved in here, there was probably some crackheads sleeping in here that shouldn't have been there. They did not have any paperwork, no names on any leases, no. They weren't paying shit. They broke broken windows, probably. Who knows, right? But either way, back on topic here. So I tidy up the place as best as I could. I clean up a little bit. And Jimmy hits me up a little later, and he's like, yo, I just got off work. Let's link up, you know, where do you want to meet? And I'm like, dude, I got my own crib. Like, we don't got to meet anywhere, you know, just just come over to my place. And he's like, bet, dude, do you mind if my girlfriend comes? I'm like, yeah, you know, more the merrier. No problem. I'll take it. Bring her through, you know? So maybe like 30 minutes go by since I Snapchatted him. And Jimmy pulls up. You know, I'd never kicked it with this guy before. I was excited, dude. I needed some friends really bad at this point. So I open my door, you know, I dap him up. I say hello to his girlfriend. And we run upstairs, you know? We, we get upstairs, and I mention to Jimmy, I'm like, yo, so listen, I was trying to buy off you, uh, and you mentioned, like, we'd smoke, but I don't have any bud. So is it okay if I just get you back, or, like, we could drink or some shit? And he's like, fuck yeah, dude. What do you have to drink? So I run downstairs to my fridge, and I bust out some Heineken. It, it was the drink of choice. Still kind of is sometimes. I, if I'm drinking beer, it's usually Heineken or Corona. One of the two. I'm not a big IPA guy. Whatever, dude. I'm not into those. But back on topic here. So... You know, I, I grab the Heineken, and I run back upstairs, and I bring it up, and I'm like, my dude, I've got a shitload of these in my fridge. We're good to go. And he's like, bet. Well, I mean, if you're down to let us both drink, then, I mean, I'll, you know, you can smoke. I'm excited at this point. I'm like, dude, I need to get high. I'm out of weed. Like, this is wonderful, right? I'm hyped. So we crack open the drinks, you know, and we're all sitting upstairs in my loft area. And how it's kind of laid out, you know, it doubled as my bedroom and a living room. I had my bed in there, but it was so big that, like, Past, like, on the other side of it, you know, there was a, there was a futon I had set up. Hold on, I need a sip of water. Oh my god, that was so good. I mean, it wasn't as good as it could have been. The grocery store I went to, they were out of Ice Mountain. So I had, it was Walmart. I had to get, it, not a grocery store, just Walmart. I had to get great value water. It was literally that or Dasani, and I'd rather, I'd rather drink nothing than Dasani. So I had, it, it's not good. I want Ice Mountain, but I, I'm hydrated. Back on top. So, listen. We're upstairs, we're sitting in my loft, and, you know, as I was explaining, it's kind of like we've got the bed on one side, and then on the other side, it's kind of like my chill area. I've got a futon laid out, I've got a bean bag, and then I've got my computer set up on this little plastic folding table. And I didn't have a TV. Uh, no, 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 we didn't, listen, we were kind of struggling, at not kind. we were struggling at this point, okay? I did not own any TV, but I had my computer. So once, you know, I, we crack open some drinks, I hop on my computer, first thing I can think of is, dude, let's just play some Live PD, dude, to get it cracking. So I turn on that YouTube autoplay and get the Live PD clips bussing, and it seemed like they were satisfied with it, you know, I got this, I got a good speaker set up, kind of decent, so you could hear it pretty well, you know, the monitor was a little far away, but if you didn't have poor vision, you could probably see it fine, but even if you couldn't see it, you could hear it, so it was an okay enough setup, right? So we're chilling on this futon, you know, looking at my computer, just kind of kind of watching live PD, drinking some drinks. And eventually, Jimmy busts out the bud. He busts it out, and I'm like, yo, 
I got some wraps. This is perfect. He initially asked me if I had a bong, and at this point I didn't. I was like, no, I, like I had a homemade bong, but I wasn't gonna, I wasn't gonna make him hit that. I, I was like, no, dude, he's smoking me out. I'm not pulling out the. the if you guys saw this live stream, so some of the OGs, a very small amount of you might have seen this. Um, there was a live stream that I did where I was with Cody and Josh, my old roommates, and we like built this bong. Like we we literally handcrafted these struggle bongs. That was my bong at that point. So I was not gonna make them hit that. So. I, I did actually have, still have some wraps, though. So, day was saved. I bust out the wraps, and Jimmy passes me the bud to roll some up. You know, I'm like, hey, I'm honored. I'm like, my man, no problem. I'll roll it up. I, I offered to, you know, I'll take care of it. His girlfriend, you know, I, I haven't really mentioned this yet, but his girlfriend offered to roll, too. And that was the first thing she'd said the whole damn time. She was quiet as hell, dude. Literally, like, she introduced herself. I'm not even going to give her a name for this video because she said maybe five words, her name included, right? But So we're just going to call her the girlfriend, right? But she, this is the first time she'd piped up since she'd gotten into my home. You know, she's like, I can roll. And I was like, oh, you know, it's fine. I got it. I'll, I'll roll up. I, I kind of, I take a little pride in my rolling sometimes. So I was like, okay, I'll take care of it. You know, I had some swishers. I could pearl that easy. No problem. Let me roll that. So he passes me the bud. <sighs> now, let me tell you, I wasn't expecting some, some top shelf dispensary grade. I was just expecting some weed, some average butt, something, you know? But he hands me this butt, and I pull it out of the bag, and it's very, very untrimmed. I'm talking, like, there's probably a 30% leaf to 70%, like, uh, like, uh, bud ratio here. It's bad, and don't get me started on the stems. The stems were ugly, too, but it literally, it looked like they just pulled these directly off of the plant, just threw it in a bag, and they were like, yo, honestly, it looks good, ready to go, let's smoke it, you know? They, it, they did not touch this shit after it came off the plant. Not only was the trim terrible, but as I'm pulling it out of the little baggie he tossed to me, it's, it's got this weird, like... I don't want to say more. It was super sticky, almost like in a in a gross way. Like, you know, sometimes you get that sticky bud and it's great. It's super good. It's that right kind of sticky. But this was almost wet. Like, it wasn't cured at all, dude. It was disgusting weed, dude. It was terrible. And at this point, I hadn't really met many people from this area that I lived in. So I was kind of starting to realize, like, oh, everyone down here smokes mid. Fuck, you know, like shit. This was really my 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 realizing moment. This is my coming to the light moment here with that realization. Uh, once I got this god awful weed in my hands, I thought the pine saw pack that Bill used to bring through was bad, but I would have smoked a hundred blunts of that before this shit. But I didn't want to be rude. He brought the weed over, and I had none, so I rolled that goddamn blunt the best I could. I remember I had a little grinder at this point, and I put this shit through my grinder, and it was so difficult because it was just jamming up. My grinder was getting stuck, or my grinder, pardon me, was getting stuck closed because of just how sticky and damn, and just gross this bud was. It was terrible, and I tried my best before putting it into the grinder to like hand trim it and pull the leaves off, but it was a lost cause, dude. This shit was awful. It was just terrible. So finally, after fighting with my grinder for a solid like five to ten minutes. I, you know, I open it up, and I've got enough to roll my blunt up, you know, I, I was not putting the nugs in this blunt, I'm grinding it up, I'm the kind of guy, I use a grinder for my blunts, I don't know, I just like it, I like it, a little grinder, and then a little nug plug at the end, does the job, but either way, so, well, it, it depends on the wrap, I guess, but for swishers, yeah, use a grinder, but either way, back on topic, so, I end up, you know, grinding up all this bud, I roll up the blunt, nice, you know, nice and tight, it's, it's good to go, ready to smoke, and we spark it up, now, I get Mondays on this blunt because, you know, I rolled it, so he gave me the honors. I thank him, and I spark it up. I made no comments about the butt at this point, but I think my facial expressions might have given something away. You know, I think he might have known that I wasn't too enthusiastic about this weed. So he sparked this shit up, and I take the first couple hits, and they hit me like a brick. They are rough. It, I'm talking, it tasted like I just took a giant, like a one-hit rip. Out of, like, the dirtiest bong ever with just pitch black bong water that's never been changed. It was disgusting. But I figured, okay, maybe I just got a rough hit because I took Mondays and, you know, I pinched down the end of the blunt when I roll it. So maybe I just got a little bit of paper, you know, whatever. It, it, it Who cares? You know, I'll, I'll pass it over. 
So I pass it to his girlfriend next. And she's just smacking it like nothing's wrong. She's just hitting it like it's a beautiful, beautiful blunt. She passes it over to Jimmy, and Jimmy's just smacking it like it's a beautiful, beautiful blunt. We're maybe an hour into our live PD, not an hour, like 45 minutes into our live PD autoplay session here. I don't even know what clips are playing at this point. I was so focused on how terrible this weed was that I couldn't think about any of that. The blunt gets back to me, and I'm like, okay, maybe it was just the paper, you know? Maybe I just got a rough hit to begin with, and and it's a little better now. I was really trying to be optimistic, because I like Jimmy. I like Jimmy a lot. He's a cool guy. He's a funny guy. I love chatting with him. So I get this blunt back in my hands, and I take another hit, and my fucking God, I, w- I wish I just was smoking a Swisher. I really honestly wish I just pulled that Swisher out of the pack and sparked it tobacco and all. This was horrible, dude. It tasted so bad. It tasted like a like a wet sock, like a dirty sock, bro. But then it, like the way it hit your throat, it, it almost burnt. Like it's like hitting the dirtiest bong ever, you know? And you just get that lingering like, uh, like filthy taste. I know y'all know what I'm talking about. You know when it's time to clean your bong because that taste lingers, dude. It, it felt like that times a million. But then it, it just the taste was so bad bad dude i can't even begin to describe it and the worst part was because of how sticky this shit was this blunt was burning nice and slow this is the one time i don't want my blunt burning nice and slow but this shit was taking its goddamn time dude so i take a couple hits and i pass this back over to his girlfriend and we're just getting this blunt and roto going and they're coughing up a lung and i'm coughing up two lungs dude it's bad i i oh my god I remember feeling this pain, dude. It literally just felt like I swallowed like a like a bunch of tacks and they went directly into my lungs. They went down my windpipe or some shit, dude. It was so bad, dude. I, I honestly don't think I've, at least in a long time, felt like a feeling like that off of hitting a blunt. It was god-awful, dude. So... It gets back to me, and at this point, I'm two hit passing it. And I'm trying my hardest to just take light hits and pass it. And I think they notice, because it gets back to me after I do it a couple times, and Jimmy's like, yo, dude, take another hit of that. Like, come on, you you could smoke some more. Like, tap that, for real. I'm reluctant. I'm like, come on, bro. Like, Jimmy, fuck you for this, dude. This is terrible, bro. This is awful. But I take another hit anyways. I'm I'm ripping it. I'm trying to be polite, you know? Uh, Jimmy's a funny guy. He's a cool guy. I liked him a lot. So we finish off this blunt finally, and I'm coughing so hard that I get a throbbing headache, dude. And I realize pretty quick, I need I don't have any Advil, okay? I don't have any ibuprofen. This is the struggle house. We didn't have any medications here. If you get sick, oh well, dude. Herbal medicine, mid, all right? It's not looking good. The outlook for a, for a headache in my house was bad. So the only solution I could think of was just get drunker. Fast. I have to chug alcohol to kill this headache. The, I literally, like, I didn't know if the weed was giving me the headache or coughing was giving me a headache, but all I know was I didn't have a headache before this blunt. So I crack open these Heinekens and I start chugging like a madman. I try to make a game out of it with Jimmy and his girlfriend. I'm like, yo, you guys should chug some with me. And his girlfriend's like, no, I'm good. You know, I'm, I'm all right on that. But Jimmy's down. He's like, yeah, dude, let's chug some. So we're cracking open some Heinies. We're slamming them real good. We're watching still live PD. The entire duration of this, we watch live PD clips. I swear to God, you could pass like 20 hours of time without realizing it by just putting autoplay on the live PD A&E channel. It's insane. And the clips are all funny, right? So we're chilling out. We're watching these clips. We're getting slapped, dude. And we're drinking for I don't know how fucking long, dude. I'm not keeping track of time. We'll say like an hour, hour and a half go by. And Jimmy's trying to roll up another blunt. Once again, I'm not trying to be a rude guy. So I'm like, yeah, I'll roll the blunt. But I'm drunk at this point. So at the same time, I'm like, well, I'm optimistic. I'm like, maybe it'll hit now that I'm drunk. I'm trying to hold on to any hope at this point because I had no weed. And I also realized at this point that I wasn't going to be buying off Jimmy's plug because I didn't want to meet him judging off this, this bud, right? So... I roll up another blunt for us. You know, I I ended up doing it myself. I was just, I'm the man for that. You know, I I like to roll blunts sometimes. It's nice. I can't roll a joint for shit, but I like to roll blunts, right? So I twist up another blunt for us. We spark it up and I'm starting out optimistic. You know, I take the first couple hits and I don't know if it's the liquor giving me some iron lungs, but I wasn't coughing a lung up, you know, after my first few hits. And I'm like, okay, okay, I can make this work. So I pass this back around. The Roto goes. 
But by the end of the Roto, that's not the case anymore, dude. The lung's coming up. I swear to God, it felt like I had internal bleeding. It was horrid. It was horrid. And I was coughing so hard and trying to slam beer to, like, you know, combat it. I was like, yo, maybe this cold beer will just help my throat, soothe it a little bit. I didn't even finish the Roto. I ended up tapping out, like, you know, two-thirds of the way through the blunt because I was coughing so hard. I was like, bro, like, I can't smoke this shit. Like, like how are y'all smoking this shit, you know? And granted, they were coughing along up too, but, like, bro, I, it felt like my shit... It was bleeding, dude. It was terrible. So I'm I'm just sitting there and I'm like, oh my God, bro. I don't know how I can do this. And I guess the combination of me chugging beer to try to make my throat feel better and coughing so hard just destroyed my insides. And I could feel the beer coming back up. So I run downstairs and yak, dude. I'm down there yakking good, bro. I'm talk I'm going crazy with it. I'm and every single beer I consume this night. Every piece of food I consumed in the past 24 to 48 hours, give or take, gone, over with, never heard from again. It was all down the toilet. I yacked it all up. It was aggressive. I was dry heaving at the end. It was bad, dude. And I was coughing in the middle. It was just bad, bro. It was so terrible. I come back upstairs and Jimmy asked, you know, he's like, oh, like you were, you know, are you good? Like, where'd you go? And I was like, oh, dude, I just yacked, you know, like I just puked. I was coughing a lung up. I couldn't handle it. And he's like, oh, shit, bro. And I, I don't know if me puking like scared Jimmy off or something. Like, I don't know if it like set off an alarm for him. If he's got some phobia. But that's where Jimmy drew the line. This man almost instantaneously, give it, not literally, like five minutes later, within the five minutes of me getting back from puking, he fucking leaves, dude. He's like, oh, well, you know, I think we got to go home. It's getting late. And I'm like, oh, okay, Jimmy, you know, sounds good. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming through linking up. I say it's good to meet his girlfriend. I'm like, yo, hit me back. Let's link some more in the future, which we did. You know, this wasn't the only time I saw this guy, but I'll tell you right now, I never smoked that dirt from him again. We we talked about that in the future too. That shit was horrible. But after I yacked, he was like, oh, you know, it's just time to go, which I, I don't know. I guess he didn't want to be around me while I was yakking. Whatever, dude. Um, Sorry the Reggie Blunt sent me to Narnia. Uh, But he dipped, and I had a wonderful rest of the night. I, I crunched the rest of my beers. It was great. The rest of my Heinekens, it was beautiful, dude. But either way, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Peace out, boys.